everybody. How are y'all doing today? Y'all pray y'all have an amazing day. Hey. How are we doing today, family? Hey, Laterica. How y'all doing today? Hey, pretty T Tasha. Hey, Rachel. Hey, my TikTok family. Hey, IG fam. How we doing today? Amazing. Hey, Linda. Hey, the woman of God. Hey, Miss J. Hey, y'all, Destiny's back. Y'all, didn't we miss Destiny? Hey, Quinetta. Your journal came in. Yay. Y'all were stalking me on TikTok. Y'all, my TikTok family, like, I was stalking you. You were not coming on. Like, y'all don't even give me, like, let me be late. I'm not thinking it's the best thing for us. <laughs> y'all, come on. Hey, IG family. Listen, I know a lot of IG people don't know me. But I am a Christian influencer on TikTok. So go follow me on TikTok too. But um, but I am a prophetess to Kaya Revelo. I am a hope dealer. I am a wealth builder. And I just want to see God's people be blessed. <laughs> Y'all, it's been a busy morning. I was already getting everything structured for my whole week and stuff. So if you're wondering, hey, Sabrina. I was getting everything structured for the week, y'all. So y'all get y'all's book. The money is coming. I don't even know where we ended at, y'all. Um, okay, I know we're gonna start at. Hey, Oregon. Uh, Sabrina, we're actually going to be doing another fast pretty soon because the Lord's really been dealing with me. Why does my book look bigger? Because I, I got my finger in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when people ask questions, I'm like, I don't know. Hey, can you bring my uh, propel, honey? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, I'm a hooda patootas. I got to take my gum out. Oh, uh, like, hey, Lakita. How's my girl, Lakita? <laughs> Rachel. Okay, y'all ready? Because we're going to get off into it, okay? We're going to go ahead and get started, okay? So, Father God, I want to pray over today. God, I thank you, God, that you are raising up kingdom financiers, God. God, I thank you that you are raising up millionaires, God, out of this live today, God, that you are raising up wealth builders, God. God, I thank you, God, that you are raising up people, God, who are breaking off the chains of poverty, God. They are breaking off the paycheck to paycheck mentality. They are breaking off the more month than money mentality, God. And God, I thank you that we are getting a greater view, a greater mindset for wealth, Father God. God, I thank you for growing us in your truth, God, and for stretching each and every one of us, God, because each and every one of us here today, God, we all need a stretching today, God. So stretch us, God, take us to new levels of wealth, God. God, take us to new levels in you, Father God. God, we just thank you, Father God, for giving us this revelation that is going to change each and every one of our lives, God. God, I say that after this moment forward, God, our lives will never be the same. No, it will never be the same, God, because God, we are receiving your truth today, God. Because God, your word says that the truth will set us free, God. So God, today we receive truth today, God, that we may find our freedom, God, through the truth that is to come today, God. God, I pray right now over each and every heart, God. God, that this word will fall on good ground, God. That this is going to be life changing to them, God. God, that this is going to be revelatory for them, God. God, I'm thinking that they're going to change the way that they speak. They're going to change the way they think. They're going to change the things they do, God. God, I'm thinking that you're setting us free from old mindsets. 
says today, God. Any mindset, God, that is not serving you, God, that is not serving your purpose and plan for our life, rid us of that mindset, Father God. Remove it, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Listen, if you're ready to build wealth, can you just put it in the comments? If you're ready to build wealth, I just need you to put it in the comments because I just need to know if I got anybody who says I'm ready to break chains off my family. I'm ready to go to the next level, God, concerning my finances, you know, and, and I'm just going to go ahead and be, be honest with you right now that if talking about money makes you very uncomfortable, well, then you're going to get very, very uncomfortable. If talking about wealth makes you uncomfortable, I just need you to know you're going to get very uncomfortable around here. Why? Because we're building wealth and we build it God's way. We don't build it our way. We build it the way that God wants us to build it so if you're not into the god kind of wealth then this ain't the one for you but if you're like you know what i'm ready to build wealth i'm ready to be who god has called me to be I, i'm ready to break these chains off i'm ready to be delivered today from anything that has been keeping me back i'm ready to god figure out why is it that i'm living paycheck that paycheck i'm why is it god that we're toiling god if you're like i'm ready god then this is your word for today i'm kind i'm kind Okay, y'all, we're going to start at page 134. We, we only did five pages last time because we started at 129. Go to page 134 if you have the I am coming, I mean the money is coming book. Okay, y'all, I'm, I'm real comfortable today too. Y'all going to know that I'm real comfortable, okay? Page 134. Okay, it says John chapter 16, verse 24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive. Lambano, seize as if by force, that your joy may be full. It says, now I want you to notice something. Seizing by force does not mean that it is a war to get things you want. It is simply a good fight of faith. What does a fight of faith look like? It looks like. Your faith working against the symptoms of cancer or any other disease in your body, an eviction order, your rocky marriage, the lack of money, etc. Those are examples of the fight of faith. So for wealth to come to the body of Christ and for you to secure the bag for the furtherance of the kingdom, we must all lambano God's blessings. You are able to seize the blessings of God and lambano whatever you ask. First John chapter three, verse 22 says, and whatever we ask, we receive Lombano from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. God says, when you keep my commands and you do the things that are pleasing in my sight through that, I give you the ability to Lombano or seize by force those things which you are asking God for. Because see, here's the thing. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. See, God. God has given us this, this key. See, the key to unlock your wealth, the key to unlock what you're desiring is that you seek God first. Because God says, when you put me first and you seek me first, hey, Irene, then I will unlock the door so that your joy may be full. See, now we read this the other day, and I don't know if you were here when we read this, but it was so good what the Lord showed us the other day in his word. I want to go over to it because how many a lot of us are saying god open this door god open this door but see i want to show you something that many of you may have never read because see a lot of times when we go read john we just go read john 10 10 but a lot of times we don't read john 9 10 but see i want to read john 9 i mean i want to we don't a lot of times read john 10 9 because see john 10 9 gives us a revelation that is going to be so that's going to be so life changing to us walking in what god wants us to walk in so i want to read it john chapter 10 verse 9 hey gwen it says this is what jesus is saying jesus is saying this he says i am the door anyone who enters in through me will be saved they will live i want you to notice them jesus says i am the door catch that see how many times are you, you you're like god open the door god says i am the door jesus say i am the door see i'm the door that, it, that, that you need see you're asking god open this door for a breakthrough he says i am the door of your breakthrough i am the door for your healing i am the door because see i think about it the woman with the issue of blood see when she touched jesus her faith the bible says by grace through faith right so god has given us this grace right Right? Oh God, I ain't pressing up in this piece right now in these Jesus streets. But she's he blah, blah, blah. but 
God says, by grace, right? So by grace, I have given you access, but the only way to access this door is through faith, right? So he says, by grace, I have given you this, this key, this door, whatever you want to say, by grace, I've, I've given you passage, but see the only way, see grace gets you on the lawn. Faith gets you in the house. Okay. Grace gets you on the lawn. Faith gets you in the house. So he says by faith, right? You unlock the door, right? Here's the thing. The woman with the issue of blood. See when she touched him, right? Her faith made that door open because Jesus is the door. So see her faith, when her faith touched Jesus, it, un it opened Jesus, it opened her up to his power. So all of a sudden her faith unlocked this door. That power was behind the door. And the moment that her faith unlocked that door, all of a sudden this, this power goes out of Jesus and she got access to this power and this power healed her. See, that's what you got to understand. Jesus is the door. And when you have faith, faith will unlock the door to your miracle. See, Jesus is the door that we are unlocking. It's not a matter and so that's why Jesus says, seek me first, seek my kingdom first, because when you seek my kingdom, you are seeking out the door. See, that's why he says, knock and the door will be what? Open. He says, when you come to me, I will open up my door to you. So Jesus says, I am the door. Anyone who enters in through me will be saved, will live. He will come in and he will go out freely. I want you to notice what he says. He says that you're going to be able to come in, but then you also going to be able to go out freely. See, when he says I'm opening up a door that no man can shut. Why? Because see, man does not have the ability to control Jesus. So Jesus controls the opening and the closing of the door because he is the door. That's why he's able to say, I can open the door. I can close the door because I am the door. So because I am the door, I have the ability to control when I want to open this thing up freely. But then when I want to close it right back. So then he says, and you will, and he will go out freely and will find pasture. Then he says, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life. See, it says the thief, he only comes for a part one purpose. His purpose is to steal, kill and destroy. That's all the enemy is coming to do. But Jesus said, but what I came to do is I didn't come just so you could have a life, but I came that you would enjoy the life that I've given you. See, a lot of you have the life part down. You have life. I mean, you on my live today, right? You have life, but you're not enjoying it. See, there's a difference between having life and enjoying life because see, you have life, but many of you are surviving, but he says, I came that you would enjoy life. So then God is moving us over to a place from where I'm taking you from survival mentality to thriving mentality, where I'm taking you from a mentality of poverty to a mentality of, pro of prosperity. So he's, so what he's doing is he's transferring you to a different level. So instead of you being at the level where you just have life, now I'm going to take you to another level and say, okay, okay, I've given you life. So, okay, I, you got saved, right? You got saved. Yeah. You like to the Lord. Okay. Now we know you. You have life. You lay a written land book of life. Got it. Okay. But then he says, but now that next level is enjoying the life that God has for you. It is subduing that. It, it is you being fruitful. It's you multiplying. It's you taking what God is giving you and you going out there and you making disciples. You taking this good news to every available voice. See, a lot of times we stop at salvation, but salvation is just the beginning, not the end. It is just, the, that's, that's the starting point. Then you take, because the Bible says God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. The only difference between me and you is what you do with your faith versus what I do with my faith. What are you doing with what God has given to you? So I had to let y'all know that as we talk about this time out of door. Okay, let's go. Let's get back to the book now. Okay. So it says, so for well to come to the body of Christ. Oh, I'm sorry. I read that. Okay. 
So it says, we lambano whatever we ask because we do what he commands. Since we are endowed with the supernatural ability to cause changes. That is why when we speak of lambano as actively taking, we are not talking of some warfare somewhere or a ritual of some sort. This is a matter of faith, a fight of faith. It says action taken based on what we believe. That is how you secure the bag. You take action on what you believe. Here, we're going to have to block cinnamon because, boy, cinnamon, it just got a whole issue with me. Y'all, cinnamon keeps making a new page to, to try to bring me down. She's so miserable. Go pray for her. Okay. It says, is Lombano a war with the devil or resting? It says, is Lombano um, a war with the devil or resting? It says, some Christians have overemphasized spiritual warfare to the extent that the, it goes out of line with the word of God. As a matter of fact, many things taught in some churches today are simply scriptural errors and at best extremes that should be avoided. That is why I need you to understand that the use of Lombano does not denote war, but a resting in faith. No wonder Apostle Paul calls it the good fight of faith. A fight cannot be good unless you have already won before going into the ring. And then it says, the wrong mentality about warfare has led to many erroneous believing and accepting decomai of the wrong things. That in turn leads people to lambano the wrong things. It may surprise you to know that the epistles never use the words war or warfare in connection with the words Satan, Lucifer, or devil. The warfare of the Christian is mainly a battle of words in the mind. The warfare of the Christian is merely a battle of words in the mind. It says that is why when the Bible speaks of warfare, it talks about imaginations, knowledge and thoughts. I knew he was going to that scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse four through five for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It says casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It says, if you take the above verse in this context, you will realize that to seize by force Lombano is not a war as some has believed for so long. Instead, it is a way to fight a good fight. It is simply acting upon what you believe, which is faith in its purest form. When my Bible says that you have to believe it and act upon it and that settles it. When you act upon what you believe, you will ha have su successfully Lombano and you are ready for the hundredfold blessing of the Lord. It says, let me emphasize one more point about warfare versus resting before concluding this portion of the chapter. I want you to notice how Apostle Paul instructs Timothy in first Timothy chapter one, verse 18 through 19. This charge I commit unto thee, son, Timothy, according to the prophecies, which went before on thee, that thou by then mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some have putting away concerning faith have made shipwreck. Do you see how Paul told Timothy to Lombano or fight the good fight? He tells him to hold on to faith that is acting upon what you believe. He also instructs Timothy to keep a good conscience. That is what we call resting, not war. It says guaranteed answers to prayer will come when you pray God's will and act upon it. This guarantee does not stay with God. He already gave it to us in first John chapter five, verse 15, as we saw before. Now what we need to do is accept it. Decomai then seize Lombano, the answer with the intention of not letting go that right there, not letting go. So many times we let go. You cannot let go. You got to be like a bulldog on a stake. Come on, somebody. It says, keeping a good conscience, casting down wrong imaginations, bringing every thought into captivity to Christ and acting upon what we believe. All of that is involved when you lambano for answered prayer. And that is what guarantees answered prayer. So 
short circuiting the power to Lombano. A great number of people leave churches to follow so called men and women of God who look like they have it all together and seem to have Lombano the wealth of the wicked. And the same group of preachers that just want a good crowd, these preachers do not rebuke people as long as they keep coming to church. I don't know, I don't care who you is. I ain't gonna say what I'm gonna do. Okay. It said they even go as far as to boast that God is doing it. Those who run into the air might be sincere, but they are sincerely wrong. No matter how flamboyant the man or woman looks or sounds, if they still sheep people from other good churches and do not rebuke people who have done wrong, they are simply the blind leading the blind. It says the the people themselves are blind. They do not realize that what they want in the man or woman they are following is what others who are blind as they are have given to that man or woman. They want their flamboyance, they the riches they say they got from God, but they do not know what their that their offerings or tithes are exactly what makes the man or woman drive the best cars, own properties, media stations, yes, etc. If these sheep like people were mature in the Lord, they would know that if they bind anything concerning their finances on their own, they will get what God already already bound in heaven. The devil is at work, yet many Christians are too blind to notice. Many have left churches that God planted them in for a lousy dime. They do not realize that God cannot release his best to them because they are in a state of disobedience by leaving what God had planted them. Therefore, when they try to Lombano, it will not work because Lombano works when you line up with what God says. Back to the plunder. Now, concerning the Israelites plundering of the Egyptians, we recognize that they were God, that they were where God has said they would be. The Alpha and the Omega. The one that sees the end before making the beginning had already spoken, saying, Your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and they will serve there serve them and they will afflict them 400 years and also the nation Egypt whom they they serve I will judge afterwards they shall come out with great possessions Genesis chapter 15 verse 13 through 14 so when the Israelites were taking wealth it was simply a lambano of what God had prepared beforehand making it easy for them to seize by force God gives us an opportunity to exercise faith and trust in the great I am it says, when we understand that money comes and money stays, we Lombano knowing and acknowledging that it is God who has made this wealth possible and not us. That is why we have to know that Lombano is not warfare. However, this Lombano can only be can also be stopped if the Christian who lives by faith starts living by senses. It can be stopped when you stop living by faith and start living by your senses. It says senses versus receiving. If the mind is not renewed by the word of God, it will hinder the receiving of money that is coming via the wealth of the wicked. It says if the devil keeps you in the sense realm, he would destroy your plans. But if you keep him on the faith side, producing the right sound ways and acting upon what God says, Lombano, you will walk in the victory the Lord gave us over the devil and be able to seize Lombano God's blessing. Now. It is very easy to rely on sensory perception when it comes to wealth. And many in the church today live that way, even though they deny it. For example, let's say you are scheduled for an operation to remove a growth in your stomach. The doctor will give you an appointment to attend surgery. When you arrive, they take you into the theater where there will be doctors wearing masks and holding knives and other strange surgical instruments. Normally, you do not ask to see the doctor's qualifications and you may not see the face behind the mask. Nonetheless, your senses are convinced beyond depth and height that they are really doctors and not murderers, even though you have no proof of that. So with complete trust, you give consent to be operated on and lay back, surrendering yourself to unconsciousness as you wait for the divine defining moment. But if you were on the street and saw someone wearing a similar mask and wielding a knife, you would run. This blind trust you give the doctors is not at all bad, but not at all bad sometimes, but the same trust should also be given to your God even more. When he says something, believe it, speak it, act upon it. And that should settle every argument, despite what the physical evidence shows you. It says maintaining the right focus in order to receive Lombano, the blessings of God, understand that there is also a need to cast down imaginations. As Apostle Paul says, it senses have to be out of the way for Lombano faith to start manifesting. The scripture we read earlier from 2 Corinthians 4 verse 
verse 18 says, why we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary. It says receiving Lambano has to forget all the physical evidence that goes against what God has said. Seizing or Lambano has to forget all the physical evidence that goes against what God has said. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Maintaining an accurate internal focus is also paramount. Ask yourself, who will this money benefit? If it benefits only you, you will have missed it. But if you determine that it is to benefit God and others, you've already won. For that is the mindset that attracts money. Get it in your mind right now that the money you at Lombano is obtained primarily to finance the gospel. Money itself should never be the focus, only Jesus. If it becomes your focus, Jesus disappears from your eyes and the devil takes center stage. You are primed to receive the greatest transfer of wealth ever. The knowledge you have gained so far will help ensure that as the money comes, you maintain, you maintain the correct spiritual posture to receive and keep it. In the same vein, there is a way to condition your mind so that you preserve the proper focus and remove every impossibility. So let's take the next step to discover how to do that and shift fully into the wealth mindset. That is that chapter. I want to know what was your thoughts on that chapter before we go over to the wealth mind. We're going to go to the mindset of wealth now, but I want y'all to know what did you think of that chapter? Um, the chapter we just read um, was securing the bag. Now we're going to do the mindset. And y'all know I love some mindset stuff. Powerful. You liked it? Praise God. Let me know what y'all think. Now I'm going to tell y'all something. This book is a hard book. We're reading The Money is Coming by Hubert Angel. Okay, y'all ready for mindset of well? Let's get into it, okay? There is no such thing as an impossible situation. There are only impossible people in a situation. There is no such thing as an impossible situation. There are only impossible people in a situation. It says taking over the wealth of the wicked becomes impossible when you think it is impossible for money without measure to come to you. You will start pulling resources to yourself. Notice what the word says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse seven. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It says your thoughts are vitally important, particularly as it relates to the money coming to you. Remember this. If you can think it up, you can bring it down. If you think poor, you will believe poor, act upon being poor and ultimately become poor. Oh, that's a mouthful. If you think poor, you will believe poor, act upon being poor, and ultimately become poor. But if you think big, you will believe big and obtain big results. If you cannot think it, you cannot get it. But those who think big are not limited. It says, it says, Jesus never thought of himself as poor. He understood that ministry comes afterward. After money is already established, he was given a royal send off. It says greeted by kings and welcome into the world with gifts, gifts of gold. He knew what he came to do. He also knew prosperity had to be there before he ever preached a word, laid hands on the blind eyes or raised them from the dead. Remember what he said when Judas complained that it was better if the expensive perfume poured on Jesus was given to the poor. And we know that's a big thing. People say, ah, oh, you need to give it to the poor. Listen to what Jesus said when, when Judas was like, you need to give the money to the poor, right? He said, the poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. That's what Jesus said about that. It said he could have said, I am poor also, but he did not. What he did say revealed his mindset and how he revealed himself. It says Jesus thinks big. Think of Jesus instructing his disciples to go preach the gospel everywhere to every creature. It says Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That instruction was financially, physically, emotionally, and numerically impossible. 
It says there were only 12 disciples and the logistics were insurmountable from a natural perspective. They had no ships, no planes, no way to go. They had no money to carry out their mission of such an enormous scale. It was also legally impossible because the law forbade them to speak in the name of Jesus or even mention the name of Jesus. It says, furthermore, it was socially impossible because many did not want to listen. But none of that prevented Jesus from thinking big. Circumstances did not limit him. He knew that if he could just think big, he could believe big, produce big sound waves and act upon that which was big and get big results. It says he definitely got them. That is why you are holding this book and why I am writing it. We are all Christians as a result of Jesus thinking big. If you can only think big, you will create sound ways in line with your thinking and bring big things into your life. Apostle Paul instruct, instructs us to think of whatever is good and profitable. In Philippians chapter four, verse eight, it says that is the mark of a wealthy mindset. A wealthy mindset governs. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. Listen, a wealthy mindset governs a wealthy mouth. I want you to really chew on that. A wealthy mindset governs a wealthy mouth. It says, where am I? Where am I? Okay. It says, and a wealthy mouth produces sounds that finance the construction of angelic highways that bring money to you. Creating the mindset of wealth requires thinking about the purpose of wealth. Many who preach on wealth have lost the plot by not informing their listeners about the purpose of wealth. Wealth is for furnishing our lives with financing so that we can have enough to finance the kingdom. You want to always tell y'all that y'all are kingdom financiers. It says wealth is supposed to be used for the work of God. The fulfillment of spreading the gospel to the untold is for those who think big, dream big, use their words to create sounds that construct major highways for angels to bring money and are willing to finance their gargantuan tasks for a big God. It's about doing the work of God. It's about furthering the kingdom of God. It says, remember what the Lord said, what the Lord Jesus says in Mark chapter nine, verse 23. Y'all, this word is getting me excited today. Anything is possible to him or her that believes. Anything is possible to him or her who believes. Delicia, it says a wealthy mindset governs a wealthy mouth. It says you cannot think poor and expect to be rich just as you cannot think weak and expect to be strong. Those who think poor are bereft of words capable of producing sounds for angels to travel to you with money. Angel only angels only travel towards people who think like God and God is incapable of thinking poor. Neither can you think like a worker and expect to be an employer. It is impossible. You cannot think like a worker and expect to be an employer. It is impossible. Everything starts with how you think a thing up and your prosperity starts by replacing impossibility thinking with possibility thinking. What is possibility thinking? I will show you through the example of a farm boy who became a multi-billionaire entrepreneur pioneer, amassing a net worth of approximately $200 billion. He says, possibility thinking, Henry Ford invented the VA engine. He thought the creation of it was possible, but his employees did not. Building an engine with all eight cylinders placed in one block was inconceivable for them. Henry Ford's employees lacked possibility thinking. All they had was impossibility thinking. The engineers came to Ford and insisted that it was impossible to cast an eight cylinder gasoline engine block in one piece, but Ford remained resolute and produced it anyway. The engineers all agreed, but it's impossible. Go ahead and stay on the job until you succeed, no matter how much time it required. He said, keep going. Ford would hear none of their protests. He simply could not agree with the impossibility thinking of his engineers, though they persisted with their obligations. It says after six months, the engineers had not succeeded, which only proved their assertions. But Ford was thoroughly convinced this concept was possible and did not waver. He kept thinking big. Another six month passed and the reports of failure continued yet Ford maintained his possibility thinking. Keep working, Ford said. I 
want it and I'll have it. How many of you that every time you hear no, you keep quitting? Yet Ford kept hearing no, he kept going. It said he changed the automotive world with a single idea that stemmed from possibility thinking. It said, you might wonder, what does Ford's invention have to do with me and my money? Like Ford, you must also maintain possibility thinking for money to come to you. Possibility thinking causes you to produce possibility sound waves for angels to tra travel. The wealth of the wicked can only be gathered up by those who think big, believe big, talk big, and act upon that which is big. Your mind should be filled with wealth and with a mission, a mission to spread the word of God, even to the far ends of the world. When we think big, we are agreeing with God. Job chapter 22, verse 21. It says, agree with God and be at peace with him. Then good will come to you. Agree with God and be at peace with him. And then good will come to you. It says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. It says, you see, God comes to you when you think big, God thinks big and the power of possibility thinking and technology of corresponding sound, which the Lord Jesus and his disciples use is available to you. It says possibility thinkers can take the wealth of the wicked that is already stored up and waiting for us to take. Let us take a look at the scripture again. It says Proverbs chapter 13, 22, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. It says it is all right to be rich. God wants you rich, but it is not, but it is wrong not to know why God wants you to be rich. That's the problem when you lack the understanding of why God wants it. He said, the wealth of the wicked belongs to us, but for us to be able to make the biggest transfer of the wealth of the world has ever seen, we must know and concentrate on the reason God wants us to take wealth. We should also believe that he wants us rich and to be able to believe it. We should think it. Our thinking has to catapult us into greater heights in this area of taking over the wealth of the wicked. Why we need to think first. Genesis chapter one and verse 26 tells us that God made man in his image and likeliness. We were made in God's image so we can look like him, have his shape, legs like God's legs, etc. We are his kind, the God kind. We are also made in his likeness so we can function like him. We understand that cats give birds to cats, dogs to dogs, donkeys to donkeys. We should also understand that God gives birth to his sons and daughters who look like him and function like he does. Apostle Paul says it this way in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Be therefore followers, imitators of God as dear children. You are supposed to be imitating God. It says, so we imitate God and God is a thinker. He thinks before he produces creative sound waves. If God thinks before creating, then we think before we bring things into manifestation. It says, do not fear to act like your father God because fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. It says, God said we should imitate him. So we think big, just like he thinks big. And then from those thoughts, we speak and create potent and produce sound waves. Before God made the world, he thought first. It says, notice carefully how he did it. You will be amazed at the power. And when you master it, you will make strides in your path to dominating your sound waves and taking over the wealth of the wicked. It says to understand how we can have what we say, we must first understand how God does it. It says faith begins where the will of God is known. I'm excited because all of this is like stuff that's like he's just refreshing so many things I was already taught. It says, see, in order to call those things that are not as if they were, you need to know the will of God with regards to your desires. Faith always begins where the will of God is known. It says where the will of God is not known, there can never be faith. The will of God is easy to know. It is his word, the Bible. Read it and you will know God's will for your life. Then after knowing his will, brood over that will in your spirit. Imagine the outcome in your spirit. Speak it out, producing corresponding sound waves. And then act as if what you are believing for and have already spoken out is already so. 
That is how God did it and does it. That is why God way of doing things and exactly what he did in Genesis. Papa God himself put this capability in us who really believe in him and are born again so we can follow his example. It says in Genesis chapter one, verse one and two, in the beginning, God created the, the heaven and the earth and the earth with the, without form and void and darkness was upon the faith of face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. It says, contrary to what many have been taught, Genesis one, verse one and two happened only in the heart of God. If you've been rocking with me for a while, you know what I'm talking about. It says it is a spiritual reality that is absolutely limited to the spiritual and not evident physically. That is why verse three says, and God said, let there be light. The word is also rendered then. So the passage translate like this in the beginning, God created, imagine the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved, brooded in constant imagination of an outcome and upon the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. This shows a a clear sequence of events. First, God imagines it. In other words, God produced it and restricted it to the spiritual realm, brooding over his idea in constant imagination of the physical outcome. Then he says, let there be light, calling those things that did not exist as if they were those things obeyed by becoming existent in the spiritual realm first, then bringing them out in the physical. God made the physical out of the spiritual, the seen out of the unseen, the possible out of the impossible by first brooding over the idea or creating it in the spirit. Secondly, by constantly imagining the outcome. Thirdly, by speaking it. And it said by speaking it and then acting as if the things were already in the physical, then bang, it came into the physical. So here are the steps to employ as you can condition your mind for money to come to you. I'm going to give you the steps. Okay. Y'all ready for the steps? I'm going to give you all the steps. Okay. First step. Okay. Number one, read God's word first. So we're going to start with step number one, read God's word first. I missed my gun. Second. Okay, no, that's first. So the first one says, read God word first. You only can get it on Amazon. It says, his word is his will. You must know God's will for your life first. If you ask me, now I know I didn't have a gun. If you say, well, Takaya, I don't know God's will. You need to be reading your Bible because that's the only way you're going to find it out, baby. It says, see, if you want to uncover it, see, if what you want is covered by the word of God, if it is covered in the word that you have proof that if you want it, you will get it. So you need to have proof and the proof is in the pudding in the word of God. Okay. Step two, you look handsome, honey. Step two, maybe those some short pants. There's some young pants you got on, honey. I know it's raining outside, but you ain't got to prepare for the flood, baby. (laughs) Step number two, you need to brood over it, okay? Step two, brood over it. Imagine the outcome. So you need to imagine. That's another word for brood. Brood over. You need to imagine the outcome of that desire and its impact and how it will help in furthering the gospel of the kingdom of God. You need to see yourself rich. You need to imagine it. You need to imagine the outcome. You need to imagine what it's going to be like. I'm going to show you this in the Bible in a minute. Okay. You need to imagine it. You need to see it and all that. Okay. Step, step three. Now we have step three, step three, you speak it. So after you first found it in the word, so first you get in the word, then you, you start imagining, then you speak. You don't speak until after you imagine Then you start speaking and you produce sound ways that are in line with the thing that you are brooding over. If you brooding over getting your mansion, your sound waves surely better not be talking about no apartment. If you brooding over being prosperous, your sound waves should not be telling me that you broke. So when I get to, I don't want to hear you broke. I don't want to see them sound waves going out. Okay. 
Then it says, okay, speak it. Produce sound waves that are in line with the things you have brooded over. Declare the money is coming, empowering angels with your sound waves. Okay, what's the fourth thing? The fourth things. Act as if it is already so. If your actions, destiny, okay, you cannot be saying to God, you are believing for this, but your actions are not backing it up. Your actions need to be backing it up. You, you need to be acting as if you have faith in God. You need to be acting as if it's already so. So the thing you are hoping for is already so because it exists in the spiritual realm the moment you decree it. It says keep thanking God for what you have received even though it is not yet evident in the physical. Then number five, give God thanks. As you are doing steps one, two, and three, and four, you should be declaring the things you desire as if it is already so and thanking God for bringing, in, bringing it into existence. And so it will come into existence. God never said you should wait until he gives you what. God never said you should wait until he gives you what to decree before you decree a thing. He simply says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. He says, when you've decreed it, then it's established. So then it says, you decree it, not God. You decree it. You, not God, you. The only prerequisite is that what you decree must be in line with, with in alignment with the word of God. In other words, it should be covered or backed up by the word. Genesis, now I'm going to tell you something. Everything, if he about to say what he getting ready to say, I'm about to break out so many much religion in some of y'all. So just hold on. I got to take a go. Because I know where he finna go. Ooh, mm. Genesis chapter two, verse three, it says, God rested from all his work, which he created and made. You see, first God created or imagined. And then after that, he made things exist from what he already imagined. Let me prove it to you. Created and, um, and made in Genesis chapter two and three are two different words with completely different meanings. The Holy Spirit himself selected these words to help you understand your amount of your imaginative ability. It says. First, you imagine it, then make it. And this imaginative creative ability is only given to mankind. It says Genesis chapter two, verse seven. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. From this verse, we see that man was first created. Then God formed him from the dust. Notice man was not created from dust. He was formed from the dust after God imagined or brooded over him. So God imagined, then spoke things into existence. This imaginative ability is what the word calls creating. The word form comes from the Hebrew word yatsar, which means to make from previously existing materials. Okay. It says... It says in bringing man into existence, God created the earth by imagining, then speaking it into existence. He then formed, made man out of the earth that he had previously brought into existence. Do you see it now? It says God is releasing a revelation on how to understand the God kind of faith. And remember, faith starts where the will of God is known. So start by understanding the will of God, which is his word. That is your pre-existing material. So man was made from pre-existing material. And so he's saying that that is your pre-existing material, the word of God. He says the word then births a desire in your spirit, brood over that desire by imagining the outcome and releasing corresponding sound waves that line up with the word. Finally, act as if it is already in the physical and then it will come. While doing these things, maintain the angelic highways you have created by continuing to declare you have the thing you desire. 
He said, now I cannot speak of the mindset without addressing some of the fallacious mentalities of some Christians when it comes to how they think about money and how it should come to them. Some will copy or imitate true men of God and then prophesy money out of your pocket. But be warned, they have the reward already. And anyone who prophesies or preaches money out of your pocket is stealing from you. This wealth transfer does not mean lining the preacher's pockets. Many has Money has to come first so that you are financially equipped to enlarge the spreading of the word of the kingdom afterwards. Some will be labeled as heretics, those who will dare preach this part of the message of Christ. But as Apostle Paul said, none of these things move me. I am not moved by criticism. All men of God have suffered and some continue to be persecuted in the form of criticism and false accusation. Y'all know how I go through that every day. It says, if they did it to my Lord Jesus Christ, the same will happen to me. Nonetheless, if you know God sent you to do what you are doing, do not let any person distract you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. I have seen people leave good churches because of a single rumor, but God has replaced those people with better ones, especially in my ministry. One person leave and God adds five more. That is what God specializes in. When you preach about taking the wealth of the wicked or simply believe it, people will arm themselves with criticism against you. Rumors will be spun, but preach the real word, even if it is not popular. He did that today, God. Do not respond to critics. Not responding to accusations is something that the Lord came and spoke to me about. Now I'm going to tell y'all, if I start crying, y'all, if you've been with me long enough, you already know why. Okay. <sighs> Here it goes. Okay. None of these things should move you, he said. Persecution is simply the expression of Satan's fear. None of these things should move you, Takaya. Persecution is simply a, an expression of Satan's fear. It says he reminded me that this ministry is not ours. It is his. So responding to people is an error. Responding to people is an error for by doing so, we will be trying to keep our reputation and not God's reputation. Therefore, nothing moves us. Those who oppose the fact that Christians ought to be powerful in spirit, perform miracles, as well as drive the best cars, live in the best houses, control the economies of the world and live posh here on earth have lost the plot. Oh, y'all, y'all know I needed this. Oh, my goodness. They cannot understand our level because they are at the back of our plane. Oh, God. These reprobate people do not understand some parts of the gospel. If they did, they would see that in the gospel, there are spiritual blessings and there are physical blessings. Such people select the few and not all the spiritual blessings. I teach all and that is true salvation sozo meaning whole nothing missing nothing broken understand that it is not your portion to concentrate on those who oppose you for they are worse than the demons of hell oh. Oh, God is just speaking to me right now because y'all don't know the warfare my mind has been going through these last few days and y'all know the warfare it's the same thing the enemy only attacks me in one you know that one area you know what I mean and that one area and it's just like you know and it's like if I was called to preach about just so you know what I mean and and it's just like the enemy's been bombarding my mind. And I, I literally yesterday was really like, God, just please just let me just let me do something different. God, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I was like, Lord, please let me do something different. Please let me do something different, God. But God was it, it's the remainder. He said, Takaya, and what he just told me, he said, Takaya, you work for me. You do what I told you to do. And so I just, I need this. 
He said, understand that it is not your portion to concentrate on those who oppose you, for they are worse than the demons in hell. Remember what Christ said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 26. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How, should, how shall the in his kingdom stand? You see, the devil is extremely clever. He knows not to cast himself out. Preachers fight other preachers and Christians fight other Christians. Yet demons do not fight each other. That makes those who criticize worse than the devil and his consorts. Oh. The fallacy of the prosperity gospel. Now, let me correct another error with regards to the way some Christians think about money. There is no such thing as the prosperity gospel. There is the gospel of Christ and that gospel clearly includes prosperity. I am not a prosperity preacher, which I tell y'all all the time. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I believe the gospel calls you to prosper, but I'm not a prosperity preacher. He says, my giftings include the discerning of spirits, word of knowledge and healing. And in addition to my office as a prophet, I am sent to teach the word. Furthermore, I understand the revelation of afterwards that before all these things, money has to be there according to the word of God. So when I speak of prosperity, I'm not talking about spiritual blessings only, but physical blessings, also cars, houses and plane, plus the bank balance to match. The spiritual will get you to the physical if you accept all the parts of the gospel. Thank God for all those who preach healing. Thank God for all those who concentrate on redemption. And thank God for all those who were sent to awaken the body of Christ on the issue of wealth. We are the sons and daughters of God and should have his best without regret. We should not be broke. The lack of money is not our portion in Christ. The wealth of the wicked is ours. And it's high time you stop living from paycheck to paycheck, no matter the economic situation in your country. Christians should be calling the shops wherever we go. The devil uses money to control Christians who don't have it. Look, every time a country imposes or implements a polity that goes against the United Nations, the UN will impose economic sanctions on that country. They are able to do that because Satan has a hold on the money of this world. But that is swiftly coming to an end because the money is coming. The moment we take over Satan's financial stronghold, he becomes limited and power changes hands to the Christians where it belongs. Just look at how the devil tempted the Lord. He used food and power, both physical things. That was where his hold was. How did he get that? He got it from the fallen man, Adam. But the Bible tells us that Jesus is the second Adam. Now we are taking back everything that belongs to us. In the moment we take a hold of our money and start calling the shots, we limit the devil's, ammunim, the devil's ammunition. It says, remember, however, that that this applies to those who do not focus on wealth, but on its purpose. Those who focus on wealth and not on its purpose are in for a surprise. The Bible says says when wealth increases, do not set your eyes on it for sure. It makes wings and fly. It says, thank God. Think wealth, produce sound ways in line with wealth, act upon wealth, and you will have started on the road to getting the wealth of the wicked. Rich does not mean holy. If you see a wealthy person, do not think they are holy just because they are wealthy. Wealthy is not a measurement of a how holy a person is. It says wealth is the will of God for us, his children, but we should never be used to measure holiness because if it did, then Elon Musk will lay claim to being the fourth member of the Trinity. It says Jeff Bezos would be a chief of possible and Bernard Assault or not would be a singer evangelist. Now, oh, OK, we're about that. We're almost done with this chapter, actually. Wealth has a purpose and thinking wealthy will help you on your journey to taking over the wealth of the wicked so you can spread the gospel with it. If you think wrongly, you will make decisions to protect your feelings and not your future. Your spirit will be overrun by your flesh and you will think and believe poor and act upon being poor and ultimately become poor and your thoughts affect how you feel. And when that happens, you will start acting upon your feelings in the flesh and oppose your faith. On the other hand, if you think of getting rich, with a purpose, you will believe rich, produce sound ways in line with being rich, act upon that which is rich and ultimately become wealthy for a reason. Your thinking affects your attitude. How high you go, y'all, it says how high you go 
and how wealthy and how wealthy you become is a result of how big of how you think. How how high you go and how how wealthy you become is a result of how of your thinking. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Whatever you think is what you will become. Think rich and you will become rich. Think taking over the wealth of the wicked. Hold on. It says, think taking over the wealth of the wicked and you will have started on your way to getting the wealth of the wicked. We are not poor sons and daughters of God. We are not poor sons and daughters of God trying to get rich. Hold on. Ella. Hold on. Cause he. Okay. He says, we are not poor sons and daughters of God trying to get rich. Listen to this. Oh, Des, I got to bring you on here for what I'm about to say, because I just know my sis is going to catch this word. Des, can you request to come on here? Oh, Des, I need for you to come on here because I'm about to say something. That's going to that's gonna change all the mindsets. Oh, this is going to change some mindsets. Hold on, hold on, Sakai, because this this acting up. Hold on. Give me one second. I got a request again. Huh? Yeah, it's about to be, ooh, it's about to be juicy in here. Hey, y'all. What's going that. on, baby? Come on and read it. Okay, listen, he said, we are not poor sons and daughters of God trying to get rich. Rather, we are billionaires waiting to happen. We are the rich bringing out our riches into manifestation. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. We are about. not poor sons and daughters of God trying to get rich. Rather, we are billionaires waiting to happen. We are the rich bringing out our riches in the manifestation. I'm going to start saying that. God, I thank you that I am the rich bringing out my riches in the manifestation. I am a I'm pending a billionaire. Yes. I'm a billionaire. I'm a multi-billionaire. Multi-billionaire. You, and, and that's why I had to change my word. You see, I changed it because I said, I said, I will, I will, I said, I will have, I will have the money. I, instead I of me saying I will, I said, I do have the money. I had yes. to that up real quick. Now, because faith is in the now. It says mm -hmm. this, that is why it is so important to maintain the right frame of mind. Negative thinking produces negative emotions. Negative emotions give birth to negative decisions. Come on, come on, mindset coach. Come on, I, mindset. This, this is my bread and butter. <laughs> I gotta this say, good it, right it, here. This negative good. thinking produces negative emotions. Negative emotions gives birth to negative decisions. Negative decisions, in turn, produce negative actions. Negative actions produce negative character, and a negative character will produce a negative manifestation. Mm. I want to say so that your again. Character. Mm -hmm. You know, character got to do with the way you walk. And mm -hmm. how you talk. Your, your, uh, your integrity. Mm -hmm. Yes. So okay. negative, emo negative thinking produces negative emotions. Negative mm. emotions produce negative, gives birth to negative decisions. Negative decisions and produce negative actions. Negative actions produce a negative character and a negative character will produce a negative manifestation if you do not want to be poor change your negative thoughts concerning taking over the wealth of the wicked after that change your habit in order to change your habit you need to change your actions in order to change wow. your negative actions listen wow. this all oh, listen y'all page wow. 157 all oh, this is so good page 157 man it's so good in order to change your habits Okay, wait. Okay, you know, after that, change your habits. So after you change your thought, change, change your habit. After mm -hmm. you change your habits, you need to change your actions. If you need mm -hmm. to, in order to change your actions, you need to change your decisions. 
and negative emotions. And for you to be able to change your negative emotions and all other negatives, you need to change your negative thinking. The higher right. you're thinking, the wealthier you will become. The Come higher on. you're thinking, the wealthier, the wealthier you, become. you will become. The Come higher on. you're thinking, the wealthier you will become. Say it again for somebody in the back. Yeah, the higher now come higher than that, Rachel. Y'all, Pastor what? Eli credit score just went up to a seven eighty four. Tell him, let me. Don't stop at no six forty, girl. Come for the whole eight fifty, baby. You could go to eight hundred. Rachel, the same God who could give you a six forty is the same God that can give you an eight fifty. I mean, if you gonna shoot, you might as well just go for the whole jalopy. Come on. Okay, listen. It says. The higher you're thinking, the wealthier you be. Girl, I'm gonna walk around my house and just okay. I might need to think about five. I'll say I'm full. Girl. Mm. Then it said, uh, man, this. It says, as the list, as the saying goes, a fool and his money are soon departed. Are soon parted. Why? It is because a fool does not understand the true purpose of money. Not it says all. he may have money, but he still thinks poor. Oh God, I've been a fool. Y'all, mm. I was a fool yesterday because I was being bombarded in my you would think that with me being wealthy, my mind wouldn't be bombarded, but but right. mm, the devil right. was trying to take my money yesterday, Destiny. Okay, he's trying to take trying my to money. Take my money. Devil he's is trying to take your money. He's trying to take my mind. Come on, no, that's no, that's how he was trying to take my money through my mind. Because when uh, the enemy gets your mind, he can get your money. Girl, if the enemy gets your, get money. your money, right? You anything you like. Right. Come on. Okay. Come on and let me think. It says, however, when you have the right mindset concerning money, you attract wealth because wealth is to attract it to those who understand it. It says, understand that money goes where it is understood. Hmm. Money goes where it is understood. Come on, God. Okay. It says you can't, and when, you can't possess what you can't understand. Come on. Come on, God. Because you'll reject it, right? You'll reject it. Uh-huh. Like if, if there's a man that you can't understand, you'll reject it. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. But what? <laughs> when one understands wealth, miracle wealth answers at the door. Mm. I heard not. Mm. It says in many areas, there is a very defined level of how the poor think versus how the rich think. They think very differently and consequently they get very different results. Wealthy billionaires and millionaires do not think like the average person. Wow. Be it on issues of money, good. jobs, risk, sight, time, or investing. Let's look at a few primary distinctions in each of those areas. Y'all ready to go through these distinctions? Come on and go through them. Let's see. come on the top tier distinctions. Come on. Here come goes. On he got tier. six distinctions in the book. Let's okay. talk about jobs. He said the average person takes on a job as a way to get wealth. If they do not get a job, they think the world has come to an end. At Pretty the much. same time, the wealthy know that a job will never make them wealthy. A job is not a tool to take over the wealth of the wicked and absolutely not security like the average person thinks. A job, in my he said, a job, in my opinion, is J-O-B, just over broke. A job <laughs> cannot make you rich, but investing wisely will. Mm. A job, I'm about to go buy my stocks today. Okay. Okay, thinking on money. Mm -hmm. The average person looks for ways to spend their money and also ways to save it, right? Mm -hmm. on, the, on the other hand, the rich focuses on ways their money can serve them. They are constantly looking for investments, not ways to save money like the average person. They're not looking to mm -hmm. save money. They're looking to invest it. Pretty much. Okay. Verse th ne Next one. Three. Thinking on risk. The average person does not understand that more risk is often assigned for more return on their money. Consequently, they do not take risk at all. 
I, pl I place risk in quotes because I believe there is a supernatural power plan in every spiritual act of Christian to avoid investments that will bankrupt them. The rich understand beyond any reasonable doubt that to not take risk is tantamount to failure and leaves no room for make a killing with their mm -hmm. money. Mm. Thinking on sight. The poor worry today and do not have great vision for things in the future. They do hand to mouth jobs or businesses with little or no focus on the future. However, the rich prepare today with an understanding of the good it will bring tomorrow. The rich prepare today on the, for the good it will bring tomorrow. Thinking on time. Preparation. This is, I'm excited about this. Thinking mm -hmm. on timekeeping. The poor never put Talk enough. About it. Thought in, hold on. The poor never put enough thought into issues that have to do with time. They waste time and assume they will have more time. Whereas the rich know time is their biggest asset. You could take all of the rich man's properties are good. But I tell you, if you give him time, he will get those things back 100 fold. You've you heard conversations yeah. we had about yeah. that when I tell you to, that, right? To Kaya. What? You heard what you said about time. Yeah. I get your point. You heard me say, <laughs> don't look the other it. way. <laughs> I get your point. <laughs> I'm closing, huh? <laughs> Thinking on investing. Okay. The poor thinks investing is risky, so they do not invest much, if at all. However, the rich see a ready opportunity for gaining plenty, so they invest more. Mm -hmm. this bears repeating if you can think it up you can bring it down if you think poor you will believe poor produce mm. sound waves that attract demons that bring poverty act upon believing being poor and ultimately become poor mm. if you think big you will believe big and obtain big yes. results if you cannot think it you cannot get it and on that note it's offering time you need to repeat that again if you can't think it if you can't one. think it so the higher your thinking is, the higher your, your wealth goes to. You can't get it. I'm putting that on my post today. I'd be real enough to say I have no words concerning the offering because really and truly, I think that I said everything I could say. So only thing I could tell you is this is allow God to, when you sow your seed today, mm -hmm. man, Allow God to be, allow God to just kind of like stretch you in your mind, you know, concerning giving or, you know what I mean? Allow God to really just minister to you today and allow God to tell you what he's calling you to do today. You know what I mean? Versus what mm -hmm. you, what your flesh or what you do, let God speak, let God do what he wants to do. Because yes. here's the thing, anytime God is telling you to sow a seed, because I'm going to be real with y'all, God had me sow a whopper chunk seed this weekend. And the enemy was trying to bombard my mind concerning that seed that I sowed. So don't think that my mind don't go through what y'all go through when it comes to sowing big seeds. Oh, let me tell you something. I get stressed just like y'all get stretched, you know, and the Lord was, you know, but the Lord is stretching me and my faith even today. I mean, me stretching me and my faith today. So as you sow your seed today, allow God to really just minister to you, allow God to stretch you and allow God to speak to you and tell you what he desires for you to do. Because here's the thing, God will never ask to get something through you if he does not want to bring something to you. Anytime God wants to get something to you, and then how, you know how he said, talks about how your actions create results, right? The Bible tells us that he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, right? So God tells us there is a act, there is a corresponding result to the to your action. So what what I don't know what this is over there doing, but God just had me write down something. And he he just checked me the whole and I'm about to check y'all too. But listen, he just checked me. Mm. He just checked me. So when you when you done, if you allow me to release it, I will. Uh-huh. Give me just a moment. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, so if you allow God to speak through you to, I mean to use to, cause mm -hmm. this is I'm, I'm gonna be real with y'all. You know what God showed me? And this is something that a lot of us don't live by. But I want to I want to say this because the Lord is really kind of dealing with my heart. Mm -hmm. Like I really feel con like a like a, just a heavy burden with this word. And yes. I got to say that God is showing me something is that it's not your money. No, nope. it's his. It's his. It's his. 
It's all mm -hmm. his. And we make the mistake of thinking that it's ours. We make the mistake yeah. of thinking that we we get to tell God what we're going to do with his money. No, God says, no, I tell you what to do with my money. You know, because mm -hmm. one of the things that God had to teach me is because I was a control. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I'll be real with y'all. be straight up real with y'all. I wanted to be in control of my money because I was in so much poverty and I was struggling so bad financially that I wanted mm -hmm. to control my money. But I want to encourage you today. Let God be in control. Yeah. Because it's not ours. It's his. We think that we think that, oh, the 10 percent is just he is no baby. The 100 percent is he is. He just only asked you to give him 10. And hey. stuff. So, Destiny, can you release the word you feel led by the Lord? Yes, and God, God gave me another word. He said the work, the world is mine and mm. they and they that dwell in it. So everything that's in the world yeah, belongs to God. So that means the banks, around. that means the mortgage companies, that means the, the 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 earth, everything that's on this earth belongs to him. Mm -hmm. They the Bible says they that dwell in it. We belong to him, all of it. And so when I was writing, he said, he said, the reason why that you can't think past you know, far as your money go, he said, because you're thinking on the situation instead of thinking on what is going to bring you out of the situation. God was showing me that. I just didn't tell you. <laughs> he said, you thinking on the situation instead of what's bringing you out of the situation. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I think about the situation like, okay, so when we go look for a, for a house, right? We think on a credit score, right? And we think, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, this credit score, the money in the bank. This is, we thinking about all that. Instead of thinking on what is going to bring us out in, to, to be able to get our house, which is God. There was a person. And he tells us to think on his think on his word all the time, to hide his word in our heart. And mm -hmm. so we thinking about our situations instead of thinking about God and thinking about what he already told us. Mm -hmm. there was a person oh, on the live know. yesterday mm -hmm. and they was like um, I need to sew but I can't because of my situation thinking on a situation and so because of what because of their circumstances it kept them mm -hmm. from trusting yep. God yep. and and I've been there where because of what I was going through it kept me from trusting God but mm -hmm. Be encouraged today. Trust God. Yes. Because mm -hmm. see, I think of, we, we talked about Isaac. Isaac okay. was in the middle of a famine. And God told Isaac in the middle of a famine. What if Isaac would have said, oh God, I'm in the middle of a famine. I can't sow a seed right now. But see, right. Isaac in the middle of a famine, he trusted God and he sowed a seed. And because of Come that, on, he received a hundred times as much as what he sown. See, on, so many people right now are in in poverty and I know because that's why me and Elijah we stayed in poverty because we were afraid to sow we were afraid to trust God we were thinking afraid to the situation you know what I mean? yeah thinking because our situation, situation you know yep. and and this is what I tell people you will never be able to produce or get access to generational wealth if you can't even trust God with your situational wealth you can't mm -hmm. even trust God with your situational stuff so how is God going to get you to that next level you got to broaden your thinking. You got to get beyond where you're at. You got to go to another level in your thinking. Because here's the thing. Can I be honest? When you go to another level in your thinking, you will actually go to another level in your giving. Mm. That's a like, word. Because mm. being true, like back in the day, I, a stretchy my face was sewing $20. You know, talking mm -hmm. about the, the subject we're on right now. But was sewing $20, right? Mm -hmm. That don't move me. It don't move nope. me. And you know, nothing. Like for me, you know, I David said they David said um they were about to give David some for free, right? Mm -hmm. David said, I will not offer anything to God that doesn't cost me something. So when I'm sowing my seed, I'm look I I'm sowing seed that costs That's me. That's a something. word. You know what I mean? Because because here's the thing, God is giving me everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when word. I give to God. So, Team Whitney, pray to God. Say, God, what are you wanting me to do, God? Mm -hmm. 
be led. Be led by God. Like I know if God was to tell me to say, okay, people, so this I would do that, but God is not leading me to tell people to do that. All I know is that, you know, what God is telling me to tell everybody here is just stretch your faith. Yeah. What is what what does stretching your faith look like? Mm -hmm. Hey, yep. Mama Sherry. Because I don't know how many times I I have sewn, right? Mm -hmm. But even in my sewing. Now that I think about it, over the course of years that I've been in in ministry, even in my sewing, I'm still thinking about the situation. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking it out my mouth, but I'm still thinking about the situation as I'm sewing. So God said, think of me. Think of what he told you when you're sowing. Think of, he said that you will have dominion over the earth. He said that he will pour out a blessing. Those are the things that we should be thinking on. Thank you, God. I'm speaking to myself. I don't know about y'all. I'm encouraging myself. Mm -hmm. I'm encouraging myself. And a lot of think times, so somebody said in the comments, they said, you have to use wisdom in sowing as well. And mm -hmm. so, and when you say that, what does that look like? That That's one thing I want to understand just before I say anything, because here's the thing. People always say using wisdom as a way to justify their fear, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and so, so that's why I ask because to get context, because when, okay, for me, when I'm saying I'm using wisdom in my sewing, what mm -hmm. wisdom in my sewing for me personally it looks like, okay, I'm going to sow where God is leading me to because wisdom is God. Yep, that's what it is. So when you say wisdom, wisdom is I'm using what God is telling me to do because if God tells mm -hmm. me to do something, because God's version of wisdom, wisdom versus man's version of wisdom is completely different. You know what I mean? He sure is. And, you know, the Bible says he that he wisdom. who regards... He who regards the, and I'm talking about in general, I don't care. Mm -hmm. You can send your seed to Timbuktu. I, I don't care where you sow to at the end of the day. I, yeah. I'm just talking about in general, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to the Bible says he who regards the clouds and he who's waiting for favorable conditions, you know what I mean? Okay. That makes, cause wisdom to yeah, me, that I, right is sort of ground. wisdom yep. to me is not the, is not in, because I can't tell you how many times God told me to sow my whole bank account. Uh -huh. Me too. I'll okay, yeah, here. yeah. That that I agree with. Like asking what to sow and who to sow. That's where wisdom really comes in. Mm -hmm. When you go to God and say, God, what are you wanting me to do? And stuff, not what you want, because what you want versus what God mm -hmm. wants could be two different things. Because even so sowing anytime, means into a lot of people things because I have had it where God told me to to give somebody something and I went to go give them money and God said no I don't want you to go I don't want you to give them money I want you to buy them the food. Hey hold on um listen Lakita just got miracle money. Lakita got miracle Let money she said I got four hundred dollars in my account and I have no idea who it came from. Come on miracle Come money on phone, honey go Come ahead on, miracle baby. Money. Get your money Lakita somebody just got four hundred dollars in miracle money deposited into their account. Come on. Come on, God. Y'all know uh, Rachel got $860 of miracle money. See, okay, I, I want to use her as an example. Last week, Lakita sold her whole entire bank account. I think it was, um, was it Sunday? It was, it was Friday. On Friday, um, Lakita sold her whole entire bank account, right? Mm-hmm. Here we are on Monday, and she just got $400 in miracle money. Come on. She said, uh -huh. yes, it was Friday. Come on, God. Come Work on it God. out. And that's not me telling somebody to go sell their whole bank account. I'm just telling y'all the testimony. Because I know people will take it that way. But it's not what okay. I mean. But, you know, they like to cross words up. I know. But... <laughs> Like when it comes to God, like just learning right. to trust God with your finances, and it, and I'll be real. Like, let's have a real, honest conversation about this. Come on, let's talk about it. Learning to trust God with your money, it ain't easy. It because really you gotta understand, money is the biggest area that most people mm -hmm. struggle. Yeah, most right. like I, I remember I asked the people in my mentors, I asked the ladies in my mentorship group, right. Mm -hmm. 
I said to the ladies in my mentorship group, I said, many of you that are going to, going through depression right now, if I gave you fifty thousand dollars, would you still be depressed? You know what they told me? They said no. No. What kind of disease is cured by money? Come on. You know, like that depression is in, in so many people. You know, like that that's where they're 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 going through, you know? Yeah. And uh, take it a step further because it's our livelihood. Yeah. We use money to do to do everything. So that's where the enemy is going to fight it because that's where we use to do everything. Mm -hmm. And the reason why he fight us at money, because if we, we ain't able to pay our rent, then guess what come with it? Mm -hmm. Depression, stress, anxiety, yep. all these other demons come along with it. So I'm going to fight you in the main place well, where I know it. all your sources come from. Then, okay. If you're not making enough money, mm -hmm. then the enemy can also get the time with your kids. So Thank instead you. of your kids being able to be raised by you, instead your kids have to go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, your kids so have he, to, you know? Yeah. Okay. So money is not the root of all evil. The love nope. of money. The love of not money. Not money. Because people say money is the root of all evil. No, it's not. The love. It's the love of it. It's the love of it. It's where yeah, it's that's why it's it. one of the things like you never put your, your trust in it. You keep your trust in God because mm -hmm. God, He takes care of you. Yeah. He supplies it. Mm -hmm. He supplies it. Money was here before we even got here. Mm -hmm. Tree. I sure you know that. Money was here before we even got here. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling y'all. Before we even got on this earth, money was already here. So, y'all ready for announcements? Let's go ahead and get off in two. Oh, let me pray. Right. I want to read this scripture because I was reading. It says, and God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever need be self-sufficient possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. I want to read, I want to go down to verse 10. It says, and God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness, which manifests itself in active goodness, kindness, and charity. Verse mm -hmm. 11, Thus, you will be enriched in all things in every way. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. First, you can't hear me, Mama Sherry. I'm going to turn it around, okay? She, she can't hear me. Okay. It says, thus, you will be enriched in all things and in every way so that you can be generous. God wants to enrich you in everything and every way so you can be generous. Do you notice that? The reason that God loads us up with his blessing is so we can be generous. The reason why God loads us up with wealth is so we can be generous. That's it. And the it money says, before you. your generosity as it is administered by us all will bring forth by us will bring forth thanksgiving to God. So God gets, so God causes us to give because when we are givers and when we give to people, when we are a blessing, what God says is then going to bring thanksgiving to me. So the mm -hmm. reason why God gives us what we need is so that way he can bring glory back to him. Right. So God says that you're going to be enriched in all things in every way so that you can be generous. And then when your generosity is administered, he says, then it's going to have to, then it's going to bring glory to him. And so, and so I want you to be encouraged to know that today that in God making you wealthy, my prayer over your life is, and I think it's, they can't hear me. So I'm going to go ahead and turn IG off. But I want to encourage you to know this is that, in God making you wealthy, it's so that way it would bring glory to God. My yep. prayer is that you yes, would have the sure. kind of wealth that brings glory to God. Not the kind of wealth that would bring glory to you, but that yep. our wealth will bring glory to God. I'm going to go ahead and because we're not doing that today. Hold on. Yeah, I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I, I muted it. Okay. But 
Okay, so Father God, I want to pray over everybody who sowed a seed today, God, and who even paid their tithes today, God. God, mm -hmm. I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing, Father God, in their life, God. God, I thank you that you are a God of miracles and you are the mm -hmm. God of the overflow, Father God. So God, I pray right now for an overflow, mm -hmm. God, in their financial situation, God. God, I thank you, God, that we would have money with a wish, with a mission, God, that we would have wealth with a purpose, Father God. And God, I thank you, God, that our wealth is going to bring glory to you, God. God, mm -hmm. I pray that you would help us to not allow fear to creep in any longer in our financial yes. situation, God. God, I pray that you would help us to walk in faith, God, concerning our finances. Help us mm. to walk in faith concerning what you've given us, Father God. Help us mm -hmm. to be able to steward that which you've given us well, well, Father God. Yes, God, Lord. I pray right now, God, for a miracle in their, in their lives, God. And God, I thank you that you are pouring out a blessing so big, God, that they will not have enough room to be able to contain it, Father God, in Jesus' mm. mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' name, yes, amen. Um, I, gotta, I gotta run to the restroom. Okay, so what I can do it now. Can you tell so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to hold on. So what I'm going to do is this. Um, I have to cover that. I'm just going to put it on my website for now, so I, I got so I can run in there real quick. Okay. Okay. That's fine. So hey guys, it's me. It's Destiny. I missed you guys. So let me just go over the announcements real quick while she's running to the restroom. So in the way of the announcements, as you can see, her link tree is up on the screen. So. Her, if you are looking for prayers, you can send your prayers into prayers with Sakaya. Prayers with Sakaya, um, a ministries at gmail.com. Again, that is prayers with Sakaya, a ministries at gmail.com. I love y'all, I miss you guys too. Um, so also, it's the link is in her bio. Everything that I'm saying, the link is also in her bio. So the woman of God can also be reached. If you're looking to be a member or you had any questions or you would like to book her for any dates, you can go to inquireforsakaya at gmail.com. Again, that is inquireforsakaya at gmail.com. The woman of God also has a book that is available on Barnes and Nobles, uh, Books a Million, and Amazon. The book is called Hello Beautiful, Your Pain Was Not in Vain. And also on those sites, the woman of God has a outstanding selling um journal on there called sis i need help so again those books is called hello beautiful and the journal is called sis i need help and that is by takaya a revelo if you're going on amazon so again those things are available on amazon Barnes and nobles and books a million if you are looking to sell as you can see on the screen in the second red box it says so so a seed here. If you click that button, all of her sewing links will pop up. Um, Zoom Church has been canceled for Friday, y'all. If y'all wasn't aware, Zoom Church is canceled for Friday. Um, everything that I'm saying is in the link that's in her bio. Also, the woman of God has a mentorship program. The mentorship program is available. It's three days a week. Um, yes. It's available. Uh -huh. well, it's actually five days a week. It's just only that two of the days that we go live, though. Like okay, coaching, so five, two coaching okay, sessions. So it's five days a week, and you can go and sign up in the link tree that's in her bio where it says "Join the Sis Tribe," which is the fourth block down. So, join the Sis Tribe. The Sis Tribe is a mentorship program. It gives you coaching ses sessions. It gives you um. Lessons to learn. It gives you a, um, assignments and different things like that that you could come and you can join. Actually, tonight the mentorship program is on Monday. I'm excited that tonight the mentorship program will be happening 6:30 p.m. CST time. So the ministry works off of CST time, guys. So I want y'all to remember that. So please, if you're already in the mentorship program, make sure you look. Um, for your emails throughout the day, look at your promotions, look at your spam, look at your junk mail. I want to clarify that. Make sure that you're looking for that email um, throughout the day. Pastor Eli will be live, which is Takaya, uh husband, if you guys didn't know, will be live with the Rooted Series on Wednesday. So Wednesday, 7 o'clock, CSC time, the same platform, the Rooted Series. And we are on part four, y'all, of the Rooted Series. So part four of the Rooted Series will be happening. 
Um, if you're looking to mail her anything, the P.O. Box is above on the link tree. So that is P.O. Box 230, Mahia, Texas, 76667. Again, that is P.O. Box 230, Mahia, Texas, 76667. Also, if you guys didn't know, we also have um uh an office, administrative office phone number is available also in her link tree as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and give that number out. The number if you have any questions or you are looking to um, have any concerns or you need help with something, we are here to help you. The number is 682-615-2415. Again, that number is 682-615-2415. And that number is available and open to anyone. It's open from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. CST time. So you guys are welcome to call into the administrative office and um talk to us if you have any concerns or anything like that. And make did they already make sure y'all go get yeah, your I, journal? I, I told them about the journal, but you can tell them again. Y'all go get your journal. These are absolutely amazing. Also, I'm gonna be releasing a new podcast today, mm -hmm. but it may not be loaded to tomorrow. But y'all look at these journals, they're absolutely beautiful. So be sure to go get your journal. There's something I need to tell y'all. Um, oh, also, um, the wealth one thing place. I want to say is also next month we're going to be starting a new series. So once mm -hmm. the Rooted series is over, we're actually going to be doing a series on marriage. So me and Pastor Eli, we're really excited. We're about to do a series on marriage, y'all. And so and this is also going to be... Um, so if you're married or if you're single, this is for you. And then in December, Lord's willing, we're going to do one on parenting and so well, we're really excited about that but and this will be on fridays friday night you know and stuff so, but y'all get plugged in get connected be sure go to my link tree mm -hmm. also to y'all guess what launches this sunday y'all isn't it this sunday right this sunday is the 30th right yeah Bougie okay. boutique. yeah okay y'all this sunday is it sunday is Sunday the yeah. 30th? Because today is a... Huh? No, is it... I think it's Monday, Zakaya. I don't think it's Sunday. Oh, it's Sunday. It is. Y'all, oh. Bougie Fits Boutique launches Sunday. Y'all. Y'all ready? Wait, ready? I think I'm going to change it to Saturday. We're going to change it to Saturday. Bougie Fits Boutique going to drop a day earlier, right? Because I know y'all going to okay. be at church, and I want y'all to be at church, be able to go to church. So, Bougie Fits Boutique, we're going to move the launch to the 29th, Okay. Come on, come on, Bougie come on. Says boutique launches on the 29th because I want to do it on Saturday because I know a lot of y'all are going to be at church on Sunday and stuff. And I know y'all going to be mad because y'all know we're going to sell out, right? You already know yes. we're going to sell out stuff. And so be sure to be ready on Saturday because Bougie says boutique. Oh, it's my boutique. Um, I, I, I own a boutique of Christian Apparel. And so, so y'all, also the Jesus Flip Tables 2 shirt. You come better on. get your money ready. You said on my I birthday. Know, v. Okay, V, you turn it up. You could have invited me to the birthday. Here, let me see. Let me show y'all the um. Let me show y'all Jesus flip tables too. Share that. Where you at? Jesus flip tables too. All right, y'all go. See, we launched on your birthday, V. Y'all better get in, cause look, we got this. We got a lot of stuff coming out. Come on, come on. The a Sith lot of Tribe stuff. shirt. Jesus flip tables. Two shirts coming out. Y'all ready for God the is, Sith Tribe shirt? God is going to display oh, yeah. you in front of those who try to defeat you shirt. Y'all, this is the prophetic shirts. You are enough shirts. You are worthy shirts. We got bougie, blessed, and beautiful shirts. Come on. I'm bold as a line shirt. I really love this shirt. Y'all love this. Me thing. too. And so y'all better like be ready this. because this week it's gonna be big. So y'all be sure. Also, website is gonna be launching this week too. So y'all, the new website drops this week. Y'all ready? So we're gonna be moving from the link tree over there, y'all. So listen. Me and Des love y'all so much. I gotta get going because I gotta get ready. I gotta go have me some lunch. Get ready for some stuff. I love y'all. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. 
May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I hope you're on the email list because, listen, if you're not on the email list, you're going to miss all the updates. Bye, y'all. Yes. Yo. yes.